that are in their chairs, like this is some sort of sporting event um, during COVID-19, and uh, rather than show up and do their job, uh, they choose to uh, continue the theater that was part of the, of the hearing. And of course, this is all pretextual. Uh, their argument, as I understand it, is somehow Amy Coney Barrett will violate her oath of office, contrary to everything she has done and who she is, and um, somehow that the Affordable Care Act is in jeopardy. Um, she explained, I think, with great skill the, the issue before the Supreme Court. It's really one of severability, which is a very technical doctrine. It doesn't have anything to do with the merits of the Affordable Care Act. It has to do whether you can sever the unconstitutional portion from the rest of the ACA and it, that it will survive. But the, the fact is Democrats have already moved on from the ACA. In, in uh, Senator Cruz in my state in the last six years, the premiums for an individual under the ACA have gone up, I believe, 57%. The average deductible is about $3,000. For a family of four, the deductible is $12,000, which means that in essence, you do not have insurance coverage. You're essentially self-insured. So what Democrats have done is they've, they, they realized that all of the promises that were made to the American people leading up to the passage of the ACA, uh, they have been broken. You, I remember President Obama saying, if you liked your policy, you could keep your policy. If you liked your doctor, you can keep your doctor. None of that's true. They said that we would have essentially universal health insurance coverage. That's obviously not true. So ACA has failed. Our Democratic colleagues recognize that. And that's why they have, from the presidential candidates running in the primary uh, all the way down to people running in this election on November 3rd, including in my state, have advocated a single-payer system, uh, sometimes called Medicare for all, sometimes called the public option, but it's all a slippery slope toward a single-payer system. And I just think it's important to point out what they are, what they are, are advocating, because it is extraordinarily radical. For the 100 and maybe 80 million Americans who get their health insurance on the job, they would, they would eliminate that. They would take that away from them in order to put them on a single-payer government program. Medicare, as we know, has its own financial problems and something we obviously need to shore up. It's a commitment we've made to our seniors that if you pay into the Medicare program, you're going to ha have health coverage when you, when you become eligible. But dumping 330 million people into the Medicare program in a single-payer system will bankrupt it. And we know that providers depend on a payment mix between Medicaid, Medicare, um, and private insurance in order to pay the bills. Without the private insurance premium or, or payments, uh, our health care providers, our hospitals, including those in rural parts of our, our states, would be bankrupt. So I just think it's really important to, to just lay out the facts here. This is all for show. They have given up on the ACA because they realized that it did not fulfill the promises that were made when it passed. Now it's unaffordable uh, to most ordinary Texans and Americans. And so they have thrown that out the window in favor of a single payer system. And finally, you know, Senator Schumer said, uh, everything is on the table if they win the majority. If, uh, I think you've observed, Mr. Chairman, that if the shoe were on the other foot, we have no doubt what they would do under these circumstances. But beyond that, Senator Schumer has said that the legislative filibuster is in jeopardy, that they will turn this into simply a partisan body where you don't need to do the hard work to get bipartisan support. They would consider turning D.C. into a state, and the state would get two senators, Puerto Rico, a state and get two senators. They want to permanently transform this country. This isn't about incremental change. This is about revolutionary changes in our country. And then finally, as we've all observed, they're advocating packing the Supreme Court with additional 
partisan judges. And as Ruth Bader Ginsburg pointed out, there goes the crown jewels of the American Republic, which is our independent judiciary, it becomes nothing but another political body, a second legislative or political branch. So I just wanted to take a minute and thank you for your patience um, to lay out my thoughts and observations with regard to this, uh, these theatrics with which our Democratic colleagues are presenting us today. Uh, this is all for show. This is to try to capture a narrative which is simply false and to cover up what they are really about. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Senator Cornyn, and I agree with what you said. Uh, why don't we do the business of the committee? We had a few more judges and uh, the subpoena request. Let's get through that, and I'll stay around. And anybody who wants to speak, we'll we'll do so. Uh, on the motion to report the nomination of Benjamin J. Beaton to be United States District Judge for the Western District of Kentucky, favor leaves the floor. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Grassley. Aye. Mr. Cornyn. Aye. Mr. Lee. Aye. Mr. Cruz. Aye. Mr. Sass. Aye. Mr. Hawley. Aye. Mr. Tillis. Aye. Ms. Ernst. Aye. Mr. Crapo. Aye. Mr. Kennedy. Aye. Mrs. Blackburn. Aye. Mrs. Feinstein. Mr. Leahy. Mr. Durbin. Mr. Whitehouse. Ms. Klobuchar. Mr. Coons. Mr. Blumenthal. Ms. Hirono. Mr. Booker, Ms. Harris, Mr. Chairman. Aye. Mr. Chairman, the votes are 12 yeas and 10 not present. Uh, the nomination will, reported, will be reported favorably to the floor. On the motion to report the nomination of Christy Johnson to be United States District Judge for the Southern District of Mississippi, favorably to the floor, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Grassley. Aye. Mr. Cornyn. Aye. Mr. Lee. Aye. Mr. Cruz. Aye. Mr. Sass. Aye. Mr. Hawley. Aye. Mr. Tillis. Aye. Ms. Ernst. Aye. Mr. Crapo. Aye. Mr. Kennedy. Aye. Mrs. Blackburn. Aye. Mrs. Feinstein. Mr. Leahy. Mr. Durbin. Mr. Whitehouse. Ms. Klobuchar. Mr. Coons. Mr. Blumenthal. Ms. Hirono. Mr. Booker, Ms. Harris, Mr. Chairman. Aye. Mr. Chairman, the votes are 12 yeas and 10 not present. The nomination will be sent to the floor favorably. Motion for Taylor B. McNeil to be United States District Judge for Miss Southern District of Mississippi. Favorably to the floor, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Grassley. Aye. Mr. Cornyn. Aye. Mr. Lee. Aye. Mr. Cruz. Aye. Mr. Sass. Mr. Hawley, Aye. Mr. Tillis, Aye. Ms. Ernst, Aye. Mr. Crapo, Aye. Mr. Kennedy, Aye. Mrs. Blackburn, Mrs. Feinstein, Mr. Leahy, Mr. Durbin, Mr. Whitehouse, Ms. Klobuchar, Mr. Coons, Mr. Blumenthal, Ms. Hirono, Mr. Booker, Ms. Harris, Mr. Chairman. Aye. Mr. Chairman, the votes are 12 yeas and 10 not present. Uh, the reported favorably to the floor. Next, Catherine Mazel to the United States District Judge for the Middle District of Florida. Favorably to the floor, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Grassley. Aye. Mr. Cornyn. Aye. Mr. Lee. Aye. Mr. Cruz. Aye. Mr. Sass. Aye. Mr. Hawley. Aye. Mr. Tillis. Ms. Ernst, Aye. Mr. Crapo, Aye. Mr. Kennedy, Aye. Mrs. Blackburn, Mrs. Feinstein, Mr. Leahy, Mr. Durbin, Mr. Whitehouse, Ms. Klobuchar, Mr. Coons, Mr. Blumenthal, Ms. Hirono, Mr. Booker, Ms. Harris, Mr. Chairman. Aye. Mr. Chairman, the votes are 12 yeas and 10 not present. Nomination of Thompson Dietz to the United States District Judge for, excuse me, to be United States District Judge for the United States Court of Federal Claims, 
favorably to the floor. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Grassley. Aye. Mr. Cornyn. Aye. Mr. Lee. Aye. Mr. Cruz. Aye. Mr. Sass. Aye. Mr. Hawley. Aye. Mr. Tillis. Aye. Ms. Ernst. Aye. Mr. Crapo. Aye. Mr. Kennedy. Aye. Mrs. Blackburn. Aye. Mrs. Feinstein. Aye. Mr. Leahy. Mr. Durbin. Aye. Mr. Whitehouse. Ms. Klobuchar. Aye. Mr. Coons. Mr. Blumenthal, Ms. Hirono, Mr. Booker, Ms. Harris, Mr. Chairman. Aye. Mr. Chairman, the votes are 12 yeas and 10 not present. The nomination will be reported favorably to the floor. Uh, now we have a subpoena request. I've been asked by my Democratic colleagues to hold it over, and I, I think there's a lot of interest on the other side of getting uh, the, some of the social media folks here to answer questions about their platforms. So I'm going to move forward with the request today uh, for the subpoena, hopefully give us some leverage to secure their testimony. I move to vote on the chairman's October 22nd, 2020 motion to authorize subpoenas to Mark Zuckerberg and Jack Dorsey relating to online content uh, modernization. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Grassley. Aye. Mr. Cornyn. Aye. Mr. Lee. Aye. Mr. Cruz. Aye. Mr. Sass. Aye. Mr. Hawley. Aye. Mr. Tillis. Aye. Ms. Ernst. Aye. Mr. Crapo. Aye. Mr. Kennedy. Aye. Mrs. Blackburn. Aye. Mrs. Feinstein. Aye. Mr. Leahy. Aye. Mr. Durbin. Aye. Mr. Whitehouse. Aye. Ms. Klobuchar. Aye. Mr. Coons. Mr. Blumenthal, Ms. Hirono, Mr. Booker, Aye. 